I think we started reading between the lines of cracked sidewalk squares. The faded green weeds stopped seeming like an imposition, but rather a reclaiming, an inherent and primal desire to feel the earth, to feel it for ourselves. Because we could feel that there was more, more experiences and people and laughter and sunrise rain showers, all just there, out of reach and asking us, can you do something you've never done? Something your parents and your grandparents have never done. Can you travel with wind alone? And maybe it was hubris or maybe we believed it would be simple, but we took the leap and quickly realized that simplicity was the prettiest lie of all. Life is messy and complicated and transplanting all of that onto a sailboat has left us uprooted in all the best ways. When we first bought her, broken and auctioned off, we took our very first baby steps into the sailing world. And I remember hearing old salty sailors speak about their own boats with a fanatic sort of reverence. Like their boat had a soul, a personality, stories to tell. And I thought they were nuts. Boats are beautiful, sure, but ultimately I thought they are a bit of wood or fiberglass or metal. And maybe I've inhaled a little too much salt, but I get it now. Eva is everything to us. She is our passport, our key to the world. She is our symbol, inspiration, ultimate dream, also our life savings, and an absolutely priceless amount of sweat equity. And we'd like to welcome you aboard for a closer and more intimate tour of our unfiltered and non-glorified home here on the water. Oh, our home. <laughs> that was fine. It feels like a boat. That's kind of what this life is going to be like forever. Pretty out here. This is kind of magical. Ridiculous. Very remote. I mean, you're on your own. Thank you. Hurry, close it. <laughs> you look cute. You look like you're naked. No pants to get wet. <laughs> no okay, this is... Here it is, the boat tour. It's long overdue. I'm sorry it's taken us so long to make. So welcome, welcome to this video, welcome to the tour, and welcome aboard. SV Eva, this is our sailboat. She's 49 feet long, and we have been living aboard for the last two years, living and working and traveling aboard, and it's been a phenomenal experience. It was our dream for a long time. And I can say after two years of doing it, it was worth all the dreaming. Those of you who have been following since the beginning know we actually bought her at auction three years ago now, but that first year was spent rebuilding the boat. And it was, when I say a massive undertaking, I mean a massive undertaking. For starters, this is the cockpit. We'll come back to this in a little bit. I wanna show you guys into the companion way we go. This is how you enter the boat. We've got these two doors here and they actually have permanent slats that let air flow through and also the books. So that's why the green tape is there for all of you who have been asking this whole time. And down the steps. Once you go down the companionway steps, I would say right now, belly button is about level with the surface of the ocean. So we're not under the water, but like, like waist deep in the water. So when you- fish. Ah! <laughs> Seriously? Uh, I think it's in the mahi mahi. Nice! We're gonna be eating good! Look at that fin on that thing. Beautiful! Now I've got the fish. Woot! Nice! Alright! Woo! Lunch and dinner. Sashimi for the dogs. Alright, well, that's a big fat mahi. I was gonna start by showing you guys the galley, so now this is perfect. I will show you the galley in use. Because it's one. sushi time. Penny likes it. Beautiful. Not much left on there. Great filleting. Thank you. Well done. All right. I hope the sharks enjoy that. Yep. And look at this. For those of you who are new here, historically we're no good at catching fish. Like we suck at catching fish. We are the worst fishermen I think that I have ever met. Uh, so this is a treat. I owe a thank you. So those of you guys in the audience who gave us advice on bait and lures, we are using Bali Who. Yeah. Bali Who. 
fish as bait. And this is now the fourth mahi we have caught. And we've caught them all in the last two weeks after not catching anything for two years. So <laughs> thank you, because you have been the most helpful teachers to two people who were never taught to fish growing up. Okay, let's show you guys the kitchen. And I will take those fillets with me. You wanna skin them in there? Nah, you can skin them. I don't wanna skin them, you can skin them. No. Oh, that was the deal. Okay, that can be the deal. We very recently came up with the arrangement that I will fillet the fish, kind of clean them, you know, get the fillets all cleaned up, but then Jade will skin them. Good. Here's our bait bags Good that we were using. Oh yep. yeah, these are them. So the we use Bali We just saw them in the freezer section of the little grocery store, so we picked them up and tried them, and yep. they worked. And obviously, yeah, <laughs> the, the mahi liked it. So. Yes. And the dogs love mahi. They are both all about mahi sashimi. It's very silky. Oh like yeah. A, like a slimy snake. A slimy in snake. In a good way. Probably what a snake would feel like if it was in the water. I don't know. Maybe a sea snake? If you have ever petted both a mahi and a sea snake, let me know. Petted or just pet? Petted. Petted. Like multiple pets in the past. <laughs> sashimi. Yum. Freshest sashimi you'll ever get. Yeah. It doesn't get any fresher unless you eat the fish alive. Right. Which is cruel. Don't do that. No. Nice part is the boat's just sailing. Autopilot's on. We have all of our new instruments uh, yeah. wired in. Will you give them a tour of the cockpit? Sure. Um, all right. So, cockpit. We have two helms, so you can always stand on the higher side whenever you're sailing. So, right now, we're like this. The boat's healed over. You know, the port side is deeper in the water. So, it's easier to see on the starboard side, so we're we'll standing at this helm. We have instruments. You can kind of cycle through these to get whatever information you want. Can't really tell, can't really see them very well. There you go. So not much wind right now, enough to keep the sails full and I was moving along at about three knots. Chart plotter. Three knots, is that like the speed of a bicycle or like- Three knots, I actually don't know, like slow a jog. jog. A slow jog. Yeah, a slow jog, a yog. Where did you get the Y? Yog? Yog, slow jog. And then you said yog. That was your it's combo. It's like a. Where, where the y I don't come know from? where. That's from something. That's a quote. From you just now. I'm uh, just wondering where the y came from. I don't from. know. It didn't make it up though. I'm not that clever. <laughs> Couple paddle boards, just in case we want to go paddle boarding while we're under sail. Quick deployment. I am taking it seriously. I'm serious. And the best part. We just came up with this awesome cup holder. Element, we do love element. But look at that. So you can take this out, these still stay, and you can put this one in. Boom. Dogs are tethered right now. Like we said, they love fish. And so whenever there's a fish on the line, or fish jumps, or the fishing rod even just like runs a little bit, they go wild. And so we tether them back, I guess forward technically, away from where we need to get the fish. For good reason. So last time we caught a mahi, as we were pulling it in, we had it right here and a giant shark jumped. I don't know if it was giant, but it was it was large. It Larger was than me. Teeth, yeah. And it jumped out of the water and bit off half of the the mahi as we were pulling it up right here. The shark was right here. Yeah, we'll, so, we'll post a picture of that if we can. Yeah, we, we got one and a half mahis on that. Yeah, so we got to keep the dogs tethered so they don't jump in after the mahi and, or and the shark. also the sharks. Yeah. yeah, lots of wildlife out here. And we are not the biggest or the most toothiest. That's pretty much it for the cockpit. Bunch of cushions, some storage under there, storage in here. We also added these little holsters for phones and headphones and stuff like that. Mercedes back there. If you know, you know. I haven't fixed her yet. Ooh, Tanya was gonna snag those. Two beautiful, beautiful pieces of meat. <laughs> oh, shut up. <laughs> beautiful fish fillets. The dogs want those so bad. <laughs> they would love these. Yeah, they would be. Okay, so another feature of our cockpit area. This is called a sugar scoop or a stern step, depending on the context. It's really nice. There's some pros and cons, but we really like it because we like to sail in warm climates and it's really easy to get on and off when you're swimming. So that's really good. And it comes with a stern shower. Does anybody else think I'm about to get my hand bitten off by a shark? because I just feel like that's a stupid idea. <laughs>
we're smoking it. And we do not have a saltwater spigot on our boat. Some boats do, but we, I guess we do on the very, very in front. In the very front, yeah. But I'm not going to take the fish up there. Ah! Okay. <laughs> Yum. Well, let me take you guys to the galley, which is the kitchen. You guys want to come? The dogs definitely do, because that's where the fish is going. Got a quick release on that. <laughs> Down the companion way. I already gave you the score. Come on, guys. Get some fishes. Go on. Go on. Some fat fish fillets. Or fillets, depending on how fillets. you say it. Technically, the proper way to say is fillet, but Americans in the comment section make fun of us for that 100% of the time. Because Americans say fillet. But it's not French. There's no French history of the word fillet. So anyway, that's a sidetrack. Welcome to the galley. Ta-da! <laughs> when we were boat shopping, dreaming of doing this and saving money for boats and stuff, we really wanted an L-shaped or like a U-shaped uh, kitchen. We Some kitchens and boats are just like a straight, like along one wall and that's it. Um, and for us, this just really, this design really appealed to us. So we got exactly what we wanted when we got this boat with the galley design. So before I touch everything to show you guys, I'm going to rinse my hands. Or maybe I should just show you as I make lunch. That's a good idea, because I'm starving. <laughs> so over here, this is our air fryer, but it's not bolted down or anything. So we just use this strap to keep it in when we're sailing. On the side, we keep our oven mitts for our oven, which is on a gimbal. So this stays level at all times. Right now the boat is not level, so that's why this looks a little wonky. And then we start our boards over here. And our, one of our main pantries is in here. We have a bunch of these totes and our knife set. And then down here, jar is full of dry goods. So it's really easy to get things in and out. And then this is like three of these totes back. I will link these on Amazon. We had these in Hawaii when we lived in a bus. Different backstory. And they kept everything fresh and dry, so we bought a new set when we moved onto the boat. So we've been using this particular brand, this particular set for what, like Eight, seven years? Seven years, yeah. And they're fabulous. Bananas on a boat, Jade? <laughs> Supposedly bananas on a boat are unlucky. But Brett is not willing to be on a boat where there are not bananas present. Yeah, not worth it. That's unlucky for me if I don't have bananas. <laughs> it's his favorite. Oh, Penny's up on that. Oh, Penny's going potty. So a lot of you ask, where do the dogs go potty and how do they do it? Just like this. Um, when they need to go, they usually will tell us because um, usually they're tethered and we're out here with them. So they'll say, hey, you'll bark or let us know, hey, we need to go potty. And then we bring them up on deck and they go potty. We were inside and she needed to go, so she took herself. Which, so I, I mean, that should be pretty evident that the dogs are so comfortable underway. Our dogs love sailing. They love it, they are super comfortable, they're happy. And um, so Jade's gonna pick up the poop and then we have a wash down hose so we can kind of wash the decks, otherwise it, it'd be gross. So then we'll wash the deck and move on. Fillets are still there. I thought there was a chance that that guy ate him. Did you think about stealing the fish? Good girl, Penny. Good girl. Did you do a good girl? Oh, post pie, you zoom me. Go on. Most of the time, probably like 99% of the time, we take the dogs to the beach to go to the bathroom. We take them a couple times a day at least. We run around, they go potty, they get zoomies, they run, we get zoomies, we run, and it's a good time. But yeah. obviously right now we are on a passage, we are pretty far from land, and we're only gonna be getting farther from land for a while. And so this is this is the deal. And they obviously they know the deal, they know how it works, they know that harnesses mean that we are sailing generally for a while. Dogs are amazingly adaptable, and we have two of the best ever. I mean, we're partial to our own dogs. We are definitely lucky. We got both dogs before we started sailing and neither of them get seasick, which is huge. Dogs are kind of like people. Some dogs get seasick, some dogs don't. And our dogs don't, and that's just luck. Okay, back to making lunch in the kitchen. 
I showed you these things. The next thing I'm doing for lunch is I'm going to get some produce. We keep produce in a few different places. One of them is in our fridge. This is a front-loading fridge, which was a huge, very important thing to us because it is easier to keep things organized. And I have these trays. It's not organized at all right now. I'm like, it's easy to keep organized. Okay. This is real life. <laughs> Bell pepper. So we have some produce in there, in that fridge. We have some produce hanging up here. We have some produce on the door. We have some produce in this basket. We have other produce. I love your lilt about in the produce. There. Basket, in the fridge. In the fridge. That battery died. Okay. Okay. Bell pepper, avocado. I'm kind of thinking like poke bowls. I'm down. Does that sound good to you? We have rice. We do not have any rice. Riceless poke bowls, which is, that's fine. And we also keep produce in our freezer, which doesn't actually work. The compressor is not good enough to freeze. So it keeps it at fridge temperature. So we have two fridges. So this is our top loading fridge. And some tomatoes, some cucumbers. What else goes in poke bowls? Rice. <laughs> we can make some rice. Sure, here. Yeah. Come to the garage. Would you actually mind just following me around? It's, this is our garage. It's our boat garage. There's no cars, but there are lots of tools. So we, this is technically the third cabin and there used to be a mattress here, but we took it out, installed a toolbox. Each of our toolbox drawers has a handy latch, um, which I installed post so that they each lock and unlock individually. We've got like dog food. Right here's our first aid tote, so this is super easy to access while on your way. Come back inside! Then go inside, Penny inside. There might be another fish. Should we go look? Yep. Come on in. Thank you for listening. Good boy. Good girl. What? We do not have any fishes on the line. Okay. Sometimes they are the ones to alert us. Are there do, dolphins? Oh, they do a quick horizon check for us. Dolphins we are today. still under sale, so we kind of have to do this tour while we make sure we don't run into anybody. Yes, I love you. Do you want more fish? Okay, we've been showing you guys. Garage. Garage. Go girl, stay inside. Um, and then in the garage, you've got to come in the room with me. Oh yeah, so toolbox, first aid, other supplies, dog food. There's a, a auxiliary fuel tank right there. There's a water tank under all of this. This big, is like the least glorious part of big the Big freezer, boat. but this is an amazing part. <laughs> big freezer. Yep. Full of good things. We Full got frozen waffles. Frozen waffles. For... We got some ice cream, some pink lemonade, all sorts of good stuff in there. Really good stuff. Really good stuff. Our favorite things live in the fridge. Over here, ice maker that we really don't use very much anymore. Vitamix, at least the base of it, the top of it is over here. And... This is our secondary pantry. I converted this closet to be in. And look, we've got a supply wow. of popcorn. This is like a week's worth. Yep. And I've added a shelf where we have our pants. One of you guys got this for us actually as a gift off our Amazon wish list. We use them all the time and love them, so thank you very much. More pans and a rice maker. Rice maker. Just an Instapot, just a like pressure cooker, everything. We got the Instant Pot after many recommendations to have one on a boat. It was it's a, a good recommendation. very good yep. boat purchase. Um, what else? We got some surfboards, more storage back there, kind of couch pillows, vacuum, which we use a lot, but also not enough. <laughs> we use the vacuum like twice a day. And Brett every single day is like, I think it's time to vacuum. That's because we have two dogs. Yes. And, and two... we have two shedding dogs. We yes. don't have the hypoallergenic fancy sort of dog. We love you anyway. Where'd you go? I was right here. I was trying to remember where the rice is. Arroz. Nice. Would you mind strapping down the, yeah. that thing again? Just so we don't forget. Yeah, exactly. We are sailing, we are healing, so I mean, you, can, you can see things, things are not stationary right now. Jade made this awesome little thing. Holds all of like our bottles. Fantastic. It just made out of two by fours. Like, 
fours, and I haven't decided how I want to finish it, like to make it not just look like a two by four. If you've ever made a two by four look pretty, let me know. Something that we can get easily. Yeah. <laughs> Wait, where did you get that from? Oh my gosh, I forgot to show everybody. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Wait, this is a really bad decision. I did a bad thing. Yes, you thing. did. Do not leave like really tall, tippable containers of rice without a lid on them. <laughs> that was a bad choice. <laughs> Silverware drawer. So we've got knives, and this is a left-handed potato peeler that my mom got me. It's ambidextrous. Yes, Brett can also use it. And we have silverware, but the most important thing. <laughs> You'll have to show us how those work later. These are whisk attachments that you install into a drill. You know who has drills? Sailors. Wait, hold still. Sorry. It just attaches to a drill, and then you can use your drill as a mixer. Amazing. I, I, I love them, and I have bought them for pretty much all of my friends. It is really hot in here. It is so hot in here. Can you open that just? What is this one? Oh. Checking for boats. Where's the lope? Oh, there she is. We have a big shipping boat, like one of those shipping container barges coming into view. Like 10.30. Okay. I'm going to say six miles off. So we've got a little while. Right. And I think that they're headed this way. So that means that they will pass way before we get anywhere near them. Yeah. But we'll keep an eye in case they turn. Yeah, right now we're doing probably three knots and they're probably doing 13 knots. This seems to be what they normally are doing, huh? Yeah. I feel like I'm missing important ingredients with, oh, the rice. Which brings us to our sink. Because you should always wash your rice. Wash your rice. Yeah, look how dirty that water is. Disgusting. I think that's just starch, but the camera overheated, so you were just in the freezer. I just finished chopping the vegetables while you guys were chilling out. Huh. And tossing scraps. Organics get to go overboard. Sometimes they hit the lifelines and end up on the deck. Then we have to go pick them up and throw them in the floor again so you don't slip on a, literally slip on a slip banana Slip on a banana peel, yeah. Before the camera overheated, I was showing you guys the sink. We have our main faucet, which is just water straight from our water tank. And then we have, this is an Akuba UV filter faucet. So it runs an extra filtration, a UV filtration and a carbon filter on all of our tank water. So this is what we drink. This is drinking water, water for dishes. They're both safe to drink. Like we drank this for over a year and it's 100% fine. But I mean, this is just, I mean, we didn't, oh, we didn't die. Hopefully it's 100% fine, but it, it's better to have like the- But yeah. Should I get the dog some more fish? Tango! Sushimi? Oh, <laughs> I dropped it, I'm sorry. Well, that's a big chunk. Oh, happy boy. Penny's over there eating kibble. She's like, wait a second, I'm getting chips. Penny, for whatever reason, gets her food from the bowl and then walks it through the boat and drops it and eats it. Some of it. Apparently some some pieces have different flavors and she is picky. Penny, do you wanna sushi mix? Sit. Should I make her do a trick for everybody? Sure. Bingo's laying down. Up. Good girl. Good wow. balancing. Not I know, wow. Moving. Seriously, while we're yeah. rocking? Good girl. <laughs> that earns sashimi. For sure. Then I was like, wait, I was laying down. You already got two pieces. It's a clear night. Maybe we can see the green flash tonight. That would be fun. Has anyone ever caught that on film, or is it something you can only see with the naked eye? I don't think it's real, so We've you have to imagine it. it. We've seen it. Okay, will you hurry and make us something to eat? Oh, we're still waiting on rice? Yeah. Oh. These are the superior avocado. You can't tell me any different. I mean, look at that. Wow. Beautiful. And I just saw a tip for boats, I guess probably everybody, that if you wrap it in tin foil and put it in the fridge, well, just wrapping it in tin foil, I think is the big thing. <laughs> Aluminum foil. My mom used to- Aluminium? <laughs> when I was a little girl, my grandma was my main caretaker uh, while, while my mom worked. And my grandma always called it tin foil. And for some reason it's driven my mom crazy my entire life that I always call this tin foil. Aluminum foil. Hey, this is avocado is firm? not ripe. Nice. I think it works. Yeah. Well, you're hurrying to wrap it back I up. I bought these at the same time. 
and this is perfectly ripe, this still is going to be ripe in a couple days. I don't know about you, but I have a history of having five avocados ripe on the same day repeatedly. It's the worst. Then you make guac, and then it makes it better. But These are reusable bags, like washable Ziplocs. One of the biggest goals living on a boat is to limit the amount of trash that you have because it is really, really hard to find a place to throw away trash. So, reusable anything. Yeah, I just washed that one. Apparently it didn't dry all the way. Well, I think you just washed it today, right? I did, so yeah. It's probably fine. Yeah. We shall put away some of the fish because we will not eat all this today. You see, we got a boat out there. This is our radar. We also have AIS laid over the top. Mm -hmm. So sure enough, big old boat about... What is that, six miles away? It is now. You can see them, even without the zoom lens. That's a big boat. Technically, in this situation, we're under sail. He's definitely under motor. We technically have right away, but uh, we'll wait and see You know, if our paths are gonna converge but we would definitely give way to him because if we ran into each other, he might not even know. Penny, let's go inside. I am thinking that while the rice cooks, we should do the rest of the tour. Okay. It is kind of getting dark. I'm going to open curtains or turn on my, I'll open curtains. We've got a little sun left. And we can talk about the natural lighting. Uh, one of the things we love about our boat is that we have a lot of big windows so that even though we live on a boat, it never feels like dark or dungeon-y. However, it does often feel too bright, so that's the trade-off. We actually have blackout Velcro curtains that we put up when we work on our computers. So traditionally, this is where you would sit with your paper charts and your instruments, and you would plan out and like route us having no ancestry in sailing. We don't really ever route the traditional way. Um, so usually we'll just use this as a desk. Yep, and lift up. Yes. We store some computers in here. I have a fancy editing keyboard there. And kind of like a catch-all. We call this our like um, glove, glove box. box. Yep. Yeah, we call this the glove box. And over here, yeah, radio, generator control, this is all of our electronics, or electrics, I guess. Like our batteries. Yeah, batteries. So we have 58% battery, right? Yeah, pretty good. Nav station, check. This is a ND filter. This goes on front of the lens. We just took it off because we're inside. Basically like sunglasses for a camera. Here is the saloon with two O's, which is basically the living room area of the boat. And we've got like wraparound seating. There are storage underneath the couch cushions. So, too many. So, for example, these lift up. We got like some paper towels. It's actually pretty empty in there right now. They're <laughs> looking in there. <laughs> what are we looking at? There's also storage in these bins. We have safety equipment in this one because it's so easy to get to in an emergency. I'll plug the hole. That was a live action. Yeah, and no, that was fantastic. Yeah. And then in this one, we have snacks because those also need Those to are also lifesavers. Yeah, and literally lifesavers. Yeah, there's lifesavers in there? I don't know, but I could pull oh, them Oh man, there I should be. If there were lifesavers in there, that'd be- I don't think we actually have lifesavers. And these are, they, they have like little thumb screws to hold them down. So right now they are mounted-ish. We've made the mistake of not screwing them down once. Yep. And it was a mistake because <laughs> we got in heavy seas and they went flying. Um, and yeah, so then there's storage in all of the spaces. For example, behind this couch, we have our rock climbing equipment and slack line. Under here, we have like a printer, printer, scanner, dog medicine, puzzles, puzzles, random, just random stuff. There's that boat passing in front of us almost. I don't think we could hit him if we tried. Well, I'm a dummy. I was distracted talking to you guys. It's your fault. I wonder if anyone noticed. I don't know. At what point did the camera overheat? I don't know. Because it showed you washing the rice. Let's get to the point. I started the rice with no water in it. Because <laughs> I put the water in, but then I drained it and I didn't add more. 
so we it was never going to cook appropriately. Yeah, we've been waiting not very patiently for rice. It smells kind of like Rice Krispies. It's probably exactly what it's like. Puffed rice. I mean, it's not good. <laughs> <laughs> Penny would like to try it. Would you like to try the rice? Does she approve? Yeah, maybe we'll just give it to them. Does Dingo like it? Probably. I mean, that'll work. Dog food. He's not so sure. Oh, he's eating it. I think I just gave him too big of a bite. Our dogs end up eating a lot of what we eat. Um, we eat pretty healthy, you know, rice and fish, and those are things that dogs eat. And so we often will make extra and they'll eat our leftovers and sometimes when we do a bad job you know if we do a bad job cooking the fish or bad job cooking the rice apparently uh the dogs still like it so it works out very little goes to waste and that also means a lot less dog food that we have to buy works out well we have starlink and we are now too far away for our current plan but luckily starlink now has options for in motion use and on the ocean use. And so we just need to go and either change the plan or toggle on uh, like the pay per gigabyte plan, which I think is what we'll do. You can explain it, but explain that it's a new plan, not the $5,000 a month. Plan. Oh yeah. A lot yeah, this, this is all, yeah, this is all pretty new. This all happened recently, like within weeks that they came out with these new ocean plans and in motion plans. And yeah, it's not bad. I think it's like $2 a gigabyte for data, which is, a, it's not bad. Um, the numbers will probably be different by the time this video comes out. Even if this video comes out this weekend in three days, the plan will probably have changed by then. But as of right now, we can go and pay an opt-in and then we'll have internet again. And we just have to pay for the data we use. So then we can't be, you know, scrolling TikTok anymore, do you? Yeah, yeah. gotta enjoy the ocean sounds. I really don't like having internet on the passage because I feel like it's good for me to have to disconnect. But it is nice to be able to stay in touch with family and send pictures. Yeah. So it's like a... But we can not opt in. We can just opt in tomorrow. We could. As long as all my books downloaded, let me check. Oh, did you have a bunch of books downloading? Yeah. I had basically the entire Sarah J. Mass Massiverse. 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 People often ask us what books we're listening to when we have our headphones in. So you're right now you're doing the Massiverse, huh? I really, okay, I really like the Sarah J. Mass series. It is high fantasy. Her world building is phenomenal. In a couple of her series, there's three, in two of the three, there's some, there's a spicy romance, like, storyline. spicy romance. So be warned, if you don't like anything spicy, it's not for you. Um, but uh, I think I think it's a really interesting series because it's gained a lot of pop popularity, but most people really like it for like the main plot line. But the the layering and the religion and the history and all that stuff, I find it very interesting. And I'm quite I'm I'm part of a fandom. I'm like it's not even that I like it. Like I am like fan theories. Oh fan yeah, when art. I said scrolling TikTok, I really meant like the Sarah J. Mass talk. Yeah, yeah. I'm really into it. I like it. that and Taylor nerd. Swift. Those are my two yeah. fandoms. <laughs> Puppies, go inside. Come on, babies. I, when the dogs are coming in, here, don't look right down on my shirt. That's probably too much. <laughs> probably too much. Um, when the dogs come right in like that, I will often stand on the side of whatever side we're leaning so that they can't, like, slip off. It hasn't happened, I think Dingo's slipped once, but he caught himself. Yeah, they can handle the companion wave really well, but when it's healed over like this, I kind of just spot them. Like, like, gymnastics. Yeah. Yeah. They do it really well themselves, I'm just like a backup. Light switches in boats are in weird spots, so just be warned ahead of time. If you go on a boat, the light switches are intuitive. Well, they are if you understand the electrical wiring. No, that's, boats. they're yeah. still not intuitive. Okay. Yeah. I added these, these have dimmers. And then I also added LED strips on either side of the cabinet. So it's a nice... 
I take the lighting seriously because we do have our YouTube channel and we're filming all the time. It's nice to have good even lighting when we're filming because camera's just light, light. This is our room up here. So the forward half hatches. But right now our dinghy is up on deck for the passage so the hatches don't, they're covered up. All of our windows come with this double like screen, our main hatches I mean. For light and for bugs. This is called the master cabin. I don't remember what the bed is it's called. It's basically a queen size bed. It is, a yeah, it's a queen, no it's not a bee birth. It's not a bee birth, it's a it, dee birth. Very comfortable. And here's a closet, but we have converted it and we have installed a washing machine into here. This is a Daewoo Mini. And then we just... What is that? Oh, oh! These are game changers. Fur zapper. You put them in the wash with your clothes and it helps the, sh the dog hair to detach from your clothes and then go out with the drain. So ever since we got these, we have a lot less dog hair on our clothes. Um, before we we would settle for clean dog hair, but now we, yeah. we don't have to. We don't have to settle for clean dog hair anymore. <laughs> this is our our cheat sheet. Our cheat sheet. Some internet friends translated it for us because the Google Translate was not making sense. The washing machine has been awesome. It saves us a lot of time not having to find laundry mats or washing by hand. Now, here's something really cool that you probably would think about if you spent time thinking about it. But the cabinets all need to have latches so they stay shut. Latched. We have lift up cabinets here where I keep my bathing suits and my undergarments. And below them, one wheels. Below that is a little cubby where we keep our shoes, which brings us to the sponsor of this episode, which is Olakai. This episode is sponsored by our new friends at Olukai. Olukai translates to comfortable ocean, and I've been wearing Olukai sandals for years. Jade bought me my very first pair in 2017, and I've been wearing them ever since. Various pairs that I destroy because I mean, if, you, if you go look at the video from Guatemala, where I'm doing all the projects, I am wearing Olukai slippers in pretty much every video because that's all I wear is Olakai. So when they reached out to work with us, it was an immediate yes, let's do this, let's do this forever, please. Uh, but they have all sorts of sandals. They have sandals for men, for women, they have leather ones, they have more like kind of foamy soft ones. Okay, I'm looking at pictures. I went to find like original like OG Brett wearing Olakais. I bought him, bought them for him for the first time in 2017 when we lived in Hawaii. So I was trying to find pictures of them wearing the slippers, but in this one there's a chicken running in front of the slippers. Like it doesn't get more Hawaiian than that. But this is the day we adopted Dingo. Dingo's the blurry thing in the background. He was such a pupper. But we brought him home from the Humane Society that day and Brett was wearing Olakai's. That's how long, like we are super Olakai fans. Olakai as a company is awesome. They're B Corp certified, a member of the Conservation Alliance, and a portion of every purchase goes towards the Ama Olakai Foundation, which is a 501c3 nonprofit. So go check them out. It's just a cool company. They make amazing products and every shoe has a one year warranty. Olakai.com slash Expedition Evans. I'll put a link in the description, but go check it out. And thanks to Olakai for sponsoring this video. Moving forward, back in the room, but it's actually forward because it's forward in the boat. We have our mattress. Under our mattress is our water maker. We have a huge drawer right here, which would be great for clothes, but it's full of drones. Completely full of drones. A great drawer. Um, uh, all of my clothing, other than my Whoa. swimsuits. <laughs> got rocked into you. <laughs> other than my swimsuits. Wow. <laughs> all my clothes live in here. And I fold everything into pockets. I've shown this I, I need to go look outside if we're okay. getting... Conditions are getting a little spicy. I like that word, spicy. I don't think it means what you think it means. I do not think that word means what you think it means. Yeah, just a little extra swell. Right here is a can of hairspray. We keep this handy because we use this to prop up this hatch because it's broken and it won't close itself up. So that lives there. <laughs> a quick draw, hairspray. <laughs> and a couple of hats. More hats. Ow. This hat, when we're underway, swings and then blocks it so we can't shut the door. <laughs> There's so many just little things. <laughs> like, like this hairspray bottle, because the hat doesn't the work. The complexity. The hat that about. you stuff in the side. Behind the door, we have a full length mirror and another mirror. 
for whatever reason, Benito thought we wanted mirrors in the bedroom. We do like mirrors. And more hats. Oh, and a fire extinguisher. Hats. There's fire extinguishers everywhere. But... Yes. And ropes. And then that's all of my clothes. You've now seen all of my clothing. Brett's clothing. This is this one cabinet. This is all everything Brett I owns. have two shelves. That one and that one, because that one is Watermaker. In my defense, those shelves are really deep. Like at least six inches. And then we've got a bed. We've got a pile of clean laundry that needs to be folded at some point. Um, all my makeup I keep up here. This is where we keep sweaters. That is not family friendly. Under the bed we have some storage. You said we have a water maker and water tank. We have water maker, water tank, and like random like bath bags. They're stored under our mattress. Ooh, we're rocking a lot. Pretty much all the cabinets I have these little bags of cedar. Cedar and lavender stacked in all the cabinets which helps keep away bugs. Mirrors, we installed fans. We have these little lights that are also USB ports for charging our phones. And all the scrunchies live right here. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, we also have storage down there. And uh, under here. Boats have lots of storage because we are living off grid. So we've got to take like all of our parts, tons of food. <laughs> we didn't tell you what's under that couch. That's entirely canned foods. We should show them yeah. that. Okay, and then in here is the bathroom. With an intuitive light switch up there in the corner. Right above there. <laughs> So in here, we've got, a, I'm sitting on the toilet, sink, this is the water maker faucet, so whatever, toothbrushes, razors, shampoo container, shower, typical bathroom things. Um, what makes this bathroom special is this feature. It's locked. Oh, it's locked. It's this feature. Good old throwback. <laughs> I've been staring at this camera for so long that it was starting to make me a little seasick. We really don't get seasick anymore. I used to get seasick pretty much every day one of passages, but I really don't anymore. I think my body's just kind of given up. It's like, all right. Um, yeah, but the sun is going down, it's getting dark, so it is time to turn on some sailing lights. Sailing. So that turns on our navigation lights so other boats can see us. And I think we're going to hopefully eat some poke bowls. We have six minutes, have six minutes left. All right. Almost there. I was cutting and I felt like I cut through a bone. I'm trying to find it. Guess we'll find it later. <laughs> Be careful. Up here we have spices, but then we also have like soaps and dishwashing oh. items. I'm like, how did you so film? It's... One, I know. One of the things is these rub away. These are just stainless Wait, steel. Show us again. Stainless steel, they aren't soap. They're just, it's just a bar of stainless steel, but it gets the fish smell off your hands. So every time we get done filling a fish, dealing with fish, cutting fish, you just kind of wash your hands with one of these and the fish smell goes away. I have no idea how or why, but it, it works. Absorbs into the metal. I guess. Dishes, but we put a pillow or something. We always put something in here to keep these from rolling back and forth and just making. Wait, get back there. Right. I've thought about doing maybe like a room by room tour where we show you all the cabinets and everything we've done for organization. Um, for and like, even what we keep in each thing. Yeah, and like the supplies that we do and our provisions, like something more in depth. If you think that sounds like something you would be interested in, yeah, just let us know in the comment section. Especially right now when the boat's really clean. <laughs> Feel more comfortable being like, hey, come on in. The two times that our boat is like clean, clean is day one of the passage and when people come over. Those two times, the boat gets very clean, very quickly. We heard beeping and came out and it was beeping because the autopilot turned off because apparently all of our instruments just turned off. So that's cool. Like what the heck? Okay, here's some food, but without instruments or an autopilot, we might need to turn around. Yep. 
Is that what you're thinking too? Well, I'll, we'll troubleshoot it for a minute and see. We're much closer to the departure than the destination. Fancy. I can hand steer while okay. you troubleshoot. Sounds good. Or you hand steer and I'll troubleshoot. Oh, good luck. These instruments are fairly new. They've had some weird issues, but we've never had this issue before, which is concerning. Yeah, there's no wind, we're just drifting. Okay. That is good news. I will go get a new fuse. Nice! Okay. Everything's gonna be fine. Yeah, so the reason, so we, we blew a fuse, and the reason nice. is because I recently wired the radar in as well. And I had it being powered off of that same fuse, and that fuse was undersized for the size wiring of the, of the power cable, so, we just need to get the, the right size fuse. I just I, I just undersized it just to be safe, but uh, may need to run the radar its own power leg. Uh, we'll see. We'll try putting the fuse, the right size fuse in for that size cable. And if it still wants to pop the fuse, then, then we'll have to change it. I guess I'm driving right now. So she's gone. That would have been a great opportunity to show our tool organization. Mm, that would have been great. Unfortunately, somebody had to steer. There you go. I know, was actually like, we were just vlogging around, like, oh, I guess I'm steering. <laughs> <laughs> I did not verbally communicate that nope. one. My apologies. I was Your down steering. getting stuff out of the toolbox, yep. thinking, Brett doesn't know he's supposed to be steering. You thought that too? <laughs> yeah, when the boat rolled. I'm so glad that's an easy fix. They look instruments. Yay, instruments. Are you just gonna take the radar out then or just turn it off? Ooh. <laughs> that was, looks like you meant to do that. I did. Yeah. Now if the wind would That was my back, Charlie please. Chapman move. See if Autobot works. We're saved! Autopilot, it seems kind of like a luxury. But when you're on days and days long passages, it feels like less of a luxury and more of a necessity. Nice. You turn your sun off. I would like to show everybody the poke bowls now. Do you guys want to see them? They look amazing. Now it's like the Mandalorian, like the Star Wars intro. Oh for yeah, the... there you go. <laughs> <laughs> Cinema here on Exposition Evans. Get sued by Evans. Disney for that right there. Yeah, copyright claim. Anyway, poke bowls look amazing. We're gonna eat dinner now, and hope the wind shows back up. Brett's eating a poke bowl, hmm. a poke bowl that he is now sharing with me. We left both unattended on the cockpit table while we were adjusting our sails and fixing the instruments. And the other poke bowls now on the ground. Not the dog's fault. That's how that sounds. Oh no, the dogs didn't do it. We got rocked and I felt, okay, so you can kind of feel when you're about to get rocked. Well, if you've been on the water a while, you can kind of like sense it a little bit because you can feel the way the boat moves when the water gets sucked into the big wave. So I was like, oh, we're about to get rocked. So I made a rookie mistake and I grabbed the dog <laughs> instead of the poke bowl. <laughs> and he would have been fine. I was just trying to comfort him, but, um, yeah, no, he's happy about it. He got comforted and sashimis. Would you like some more? <laughs> he licks his lips. <laughs> okay, now that we've eaten our poke bowls and cleaned up the mess, the dogs ate most of it, everything but the peppers. Um, it is pretty much time for my sleep shift. Ooh. We're rocking a lot. Okay. So I'm gonna put my pajamas on. My sleep shift starts in three minutes. It is 8.57 p.m. right now. We pretty much entirely, when we're underway, sleep in this back room. And that is like the last section of the boat that we haven't shown you. So I will give you a tour of that in the morning. Jade went to bed and 
now I'm on night shift. The wind has picked up, the sea state has picked up, so we are, we're actually doing like eight and a half knots right now, and only about 12 knots of wind, so we are moving pretty good. Uh, what that means is that it's a little less comfortable, but uh, we're moving, we're making good time. And I'm just hanging out, we're doing four hour shifts. I'm trying to be a little quiet, because Jade recently moved out into the cockpit because she was saying it was way too hot in the bedroom. So she's out here in as little as clothing as possible, apparently, to try and cool off and hopefully get some sleep. Uh, I'll let her sleep for about four hours and then wake her up and it's my turn to sleep. Probably in as little clothing as possible. Well, good morning. Jade, how'd you sleep? I mean, not great, honestly. Yeah, no, it was so hot last night. It was really it was hot. Boiling. She's gonna put some more clothes on. But it did start raining, which is good. Kind of cools it off, so now it's not only hot, it's now hot and humid. I was so excited. I was like, oh, when I wake up, we'll show them all, everybody a beautiful sunrise on the ocean. That's like one of my favorite things. Have a look at the horizon. However, I am super, super stoked about the rain. It cooled it down. It's still really hot. Actually, it's still super hot. It's not cool by any means, but definitely cooler. Last night was like deathly. It's hard to sleep when it's really hot. Um, yeah, this is a lot more comfortable. So good morning and welcome to what it's like to wake up on the sea. Brett and I were just talking. Right hey, let's go inside. It's probably so loud out here. <laughs> probably. Okay. Get out of the rain. Go, go, go. go on. Go inside. I'll be right there. We provisioned some coconuts at the last beach we were at for this purpose. We try to open this out here so we don't get coconut water everywhere. Ready? Yeah. How does it start here? Don't lose all the juices. Is it bad? Oh yeah, this one looks bad. Yeah. yeah. Bummer. Okay, I want to... It's not that bad. I know, I'm seizing. <laughs> <laughs> I want to have a coconut this morning though. Can we husk a new one? Maybe with a tool? Rather than a machete? <laughs> Penny. We'll be right there. You can go back to bed, sleepyhead. I bet you guys didn't realize when you clicked a tour video that we were gonna give you a lifestyle tour as well. We eat coconuts for breakfast. However, we have already eaten all of our husked coconuts and the machete is currently, it's in the dinghy? Yeah. Is it like in the pouches in there? It's just tucked into the, or on the side. Our machete is unavailable. So we decided we are going to see if we can convince the dogs to husk it for us. They do like doing this, but usually it's a beach activity. <laughs> we got the other one. Who wants to go get it? Who wants it? Oh, oh, oh. Yes. Success. This will probably take her about 30 minutes to an hour. And then we will make breakfast with coconuts. In the meantime, I guess we can show you the, the room. The spare room? The spare room. That's what I always call it. I actually just recently cleaned out the room because we're about to have one of my friends come on board as crew for a big upcoming crossing. So that's a little hint for you right there. And we're taking on crew for the very first time. So I cleaned out our junk room and made the bed. Uh, and that's where we've been sleeping for the passages. And that is the room she will take. I think we can make it like S it, what, what is it? ASMR. ASMR for doing this. I think he was chewing on an antler. Zero help. Yeah, he's like, I will chew, but not on what you want me to chew on. Kind of not fair. 
How often do you get to be naked on camera? <laughs> they never know. <laughs> Everybody's like, Brett, we know. We all know. I just realized that it may be kind of noisy in here because we are currently running our air conditioner, which is, well, that's where it puts out. Two air conditioners. We have one that does just like the main cabin and our bedroom. And that's the one we have running right now because it is so hot and now with the rain it is so humid so the air conditioner will kind of dry out the air a little bit in here and make it a little more bearable and we are doing that on batteries because we have like 1300 amp hours of battleborn lithium batteries we have power for days good girl we're gonna have to vacuum later Definitely. it's about time to vacuum we've got a lot of fun and i mean a lot of big exciting fun things coming this year and that is all going to be coming out in the videos soon we just got to like announce everything in the right order so stay tuned stick around um yeah big announcements soon and a lot of big videos i think the next few videos are going to be some big videos i think so so i'm really excited brett and i have been loving doing these raw videos so about like six months ago i'd say we kind of started transitioning away from the super fun, upbeat, fast edits that felt more like produced. And I loved making those videos. They were a lot of fun and very artistically satisfying. But we kind of transitioned out of that as an experiment and tried doing some more of the raw, real videos that we've been doing. A lot of you even commented that it just feels like you're there. Like, thanks for capturing what it's like to be sailing or, you know, things, things like that. And that's how it really feels when we edit these videos and when we watch them. We watched them and was like, wow, that, you're just there. Like, you feel it. And there's some, there's some, like, some funny comments like, yeah, I splashed water in my face. That was the only part that I was missing. You know, <laughs> things like that. Comment. Yeah. I, I love them. And yeah, I feel like they capture it better. So when we watch it, it feels more like how it felt like when we were there. And I also kind of wasn't expecting this. But as a result of doing the raw videos, I feel like I've been feeling a lot more connected to you guys. Maybe just because they are so more, so much more like raw they're, yeah. they're they're less of like a movie and more of just like a diary yeah i think it's kind of switched in my mindset i it from being a youtube channel that's trying to entertain people to more being a youtube channel that's letting you guys just be part of our life and like part of the crew yeah like i feel like i feel like we're inviting you to be there in the moment more than we're trying to entertain you like i don't feel like i'm fighting for your attention or like we are your... trying to teach you something or yeah. anything or show you anything specific just be be along the, for the ride with us exactly it's just super simple just come along um and it's taken it's been amazing like we already we already loved youtube but i feel like we love it even more now because we feel a lot more passionate about them the more connected with you guys and i'm just really glad you like them because I, I thought when we first did it for sure i'm like it was brett's idea it was definitely my idea 100 percent brett's idea yep. he pushed for it and he edited all the first raw ones because I, I think i was sick and and Brett was like, well, I'll edit some videos. And he made the first raw ones. And then they were like, amazing. Uh, so Brett gets all the credit. I thought everybody would think they were boring. <laughs> you said they were boring. <laughs> I said they were boring. I'm like, this is so boring. But um, it is a little bit more boring to edit. But... Yeah, hang on. And side note. So now that Jade's back and we're doing them together, we do edit the videos together. Pretty much every video for the least the last year or more, we have both edited together. And we have different roles that we focus on. And so she's saying, yeah, it's a lot faster to edit. It actually isn't much faster for what I do. That's Be the point you spend the same amount of time. Yeah, because I do, one of the things I do mainly, mainly is audio. And that means I have to watch through the video multiple times to get it right. And every time I watch it, instead of it being, you know, a 15 to 20 minute watch through just to watch it, it's now 45 minutes to an hour long just to watch through plus you have to edit along so it ended up taking me probably longer to do the audio on these longer ones that's a good point but i feel like the audio is just magic like brett's been nailing i can't do audio for watch our first videos like first year of our channel when i was editing the audio it was terrible i like i can do the colors and every i can do all the things but not audio i could not learn and brett is just like natural at it he's so good doing the audio and i feel like like all the sailing sounds and you hear like the creaking of the boat and the winches and like he balances it all so well to make you feel like you're really there. Like we should get a surround sound in the boat, Brett, so we, we can just like listen to your audio edits. I'm so proud. <laughs> I'm so proud of you. <laughs> Are we gonna show him that room? Yes. Penny, did she give up on the coconut? Yeah, I think she's maybe now in that room. Honestly, 
that's probably good. Cause oh my goodness. <laughs> it's about time to vacuum. If she shucks it too much, then sometimes like it'll get stuck in her teeth and then I have to like clean out her teeth. It's good dog floss. Thanks for hanging out with us guys. We are currently under sale, so we do have to kind of stop everything that we're doing and go out and check the horizon because even though we are really far from anything still, there are also other people out on boats in the middle of nowhere. Oh yeah, so far we have only seen one boat on this sail uh, and they're really far away. We have radar. As of this video, we have, oh no, that's not true. Man, I was gonna say we have all of our instruments installed. <laughs> no, we don't have the forward facing sonar. Uh, everything but that. But we have our chart plotters, our instruments, uh, our wind instruments, our depth sounder, now depth speed temp, depth speed temp, and we have charts on our chart plotter, and we have radar, which these are all exciting things. These are pretty much all things that we have never had before on this boat, which is kind of crazy to say and think and realize that we've been sailing this boat for almost two years now. But yeah, that's the reality of it. And now we do. So we've been having a lot of fun looking at the storms and the radar and the AIS alerts when there's boats coming to crash into us. And it's a very different, you know, it's kind of like going from sailing VFR to sailing IFR a little bit. Nice. See how much water is in it. No. <laughs> There's no water in it. What? This looks so much easier when other people do it. Hey, nice. you have some good meat though. Nice! Oh. It's so little. This is a little coconut. <laughs> Alright, raise your hand if you also vacuum your countertops. Do some people not vacuum their countertops? I don't think that's a normal thing. Normalize vacuuming your countertops. <laughs> Twenty twenty. This was our only Christmas present that year. Brett and I got this as a family present. Uh, this is a Dyson Animal V10. Twelve, I think. It doesn't matter. We bought it at Best Buy. It's been living three years in a marine environment, like literally on the ocean, um, and we use it at least twice a day, every day. And it's still in great shape. So I'm very impressed with it. If you work at Dyson. Thank you. Can we please become brand ambassadors? <laughs> like, I would m do the best ad integrations. Yeah, we already do. We love, we love that vacuum. Would recommend. It was worth the investment. Do recommend. Do recommend. Best spork ever. Mango. Aww. Did, did it freeze? It, freeze? it did. Bummer. This side looks good, though. Good. Some of that made it off. <laughs> what if that window would be better for you? This one's better for me. Yeah? Yeah. You know, you can get like two pieces of fruit per half. Is that just small coconut? I'll be honest, when I planned this meal for us, I was expecting a much larger coconut. <laughs> More than. <laughs> Smaller than the grapefruit. Aww. Oh, man. Wow, we are really striking out with this fruit. Gotta put it in its coconut bowl. Enjoy it. It's honestly better that it failed. You know why it's so good? Because I'm eating out of the coconut? 100%. We only own one spork. You really should tell them about your spork. That should be part of the home tour. If we haven't talked about the spork already, this is a titanium tox spork. Like a backpacking super lightweight spork that I have had you have 10 had, years. You have had that spork longer than you have had me. Yes, no. I have owned this spork longer than I've owned Jade. Everywhere we've lived. I don't own Jade, just a little clear. Oh, yeah, I was just <laughs> I know. moving past that. I just that. <laughs> made sure. <laughs> this, I have learned, I learned very quickly not to try to get rid of the spork. It sits in the silverware, it doesn't match anything, and it has come with us from 
apartment to when we lived in the van to now here. It's come on like every road trip, every time we've gone on the airplane. It must be smaller than seven inches. I, saying, I don't know if it's ever gone on an airplane. I feel like you take it with I think us I everywhere. Probably do. Because it's, it's a great thing. I think this has been to can, Japan. You can, I think it has actually. You could eat canned fruit with it and your fruit doesn't taste like tin. Oh yeah, we did talk about that. <laughs> you can eat backpacking that. meals. They make a longer version for actually like backpacking meals. It's like even longer. But anyways, if you don't have one or more of these, you should. To take with you from apartment to apartment. Or bo boat to boat or bus, bus to boat or wherever. I just always make fun of him. And yet she's jealous. That's what I, I should get you your own spork. I mean, it's a really good mango. 100% tastes better because it's in a coconut. <gasps> Not the spork! It's about time to vacuum. <laughs> Definitely. Be free! Be free. <laughs> Why are we the same person? <laughs> I was about to say that, but I didn't, because I knew you were going to say it. Because we are. Ah. Okay, Penny, ready? Go get it! Get the vacuum! Get it, Penny! Do you mind emptying this? <laughs> oh, wow. Yeah, I would not mind. Uh, it is still raining. Watch this. Oh, don't, don't, don't. It won't do it. <laughs> It's like a coconut cannon. It's all over the outboard. Oh, wow. <laughs> Get your bag bucket of water. <laughs> Thank you. And now we'll let the rain rinse it all off the fresh water. Good. We try to take their harnesses off as much as we can while they're inside. We were on multi day top of this because, like, it would just shake, I think. Same with, like, taking off our life jackets when we're inside. Because we get uncomfortable. By the way, we hang our life jackets here when we're on a passage. <laughs> Starting this passage. We just decided that it's a new rule. Should we give them a tour? We should, finally. <laughs> the finishing. Section of the this battery's about this to die. Should we see if we can finish with the battery dice? Okay. Ready, go. Rapid tour. This is the guest cabin. Summer so. Oh, I made it. I thought I was getting my head for sure. Battery died. Are we ready for an instant replay? Go. What? That was the worst instant replay ever. Well, I couldn't do a somersault. Penny was in here. There. So this is the guest cabin. So this is like my mom's room, mother-in-law suite, or if we have crew, this is where they Mother-in-law suite, <laughs> like the loosest definition of that term. <laughs> Sailing version. <laughs> and we have an extra fridge in here. It's full of cheese. And cheese frozen and fruit. frozen fruit and more cheese. Cool. That's a nice freezer to have. Go ahead. Go to bed. Come on. I'm really sorry about the rain. He looks so sad all day in this video. Give us a demonstration of what it looks like to sleep. Sure, it's about to overheat. Show how the dogs sleep too. Good girl, come here, lay down. So Penny 100% times is the little spoon and Dingo only cuddles on his terms. And this opens up out to the cockpit so you can see out there. Overhead hatch. Right here is another window behind this curtain. Let's see outside. Raining. And then right here we have a closet. Right now it's got our some of our rain jackets and stuff in there. So we'll have to move those before we have crew. Um, and then I fold linens and put them up on top of the shelf. Jackery probably got noticed. We use that actually really frequently. Yeah, so this is a like a extra battery bank. So right now all of our lithium 
the way this boat's designed is the battery bank space is in the bilge, which is fine when everything else is fine, but if the boat were to take on water, we could potentially short out the batteries, in which case we would have no power. So we have a backup power supply, um, which is just good to have. So if that happens, the jacket will like make it where we can still run our... We can turn on some instruments or yeah. fridge or whatever. Yeah, so we just whatever. keep that full all the time. And then it has solar panels so it can charge itself on solar. Ooh, this is the bathroom. So this is all one bathroom, so you can walk into it from the guest cabin. But because we only need one shower for the two of us, when we don't have anybody on board, we just use the shower as a wet locker. A wet locker is a place where you hang up wet things. So if we, let's say, like right, a mud right closet? now we're moving, we're mud moving room? like, we're not really even moving, but usually when we're sailing and there's actually wind, we're outside and we'll be wearing our foul weather gear in the rain, but when we come in, we'll take the rain off and the rain jackets off and then we'll hang them in the shower so they can dry without getting the boat all wet. And then this is the bathroom. So in here, Got, we got toilet, which is called the head, and we've got a shelf with our sunscreens, a sink under the sink storage. I put some shelves in there. That's where we store like our long-term shampoo conditioners. I do realize that this vlog is a little unrealistic. I think the way it's going to get cut with the clips, it's going to make it seem where we're both inside a lot, like together. That's actually rarely true. There's almost always one person outside watching at all times or like, like very, very frequently. Like we have to really be paying attention when we're out here, obviously to keep everything safe. We're not just like messing around inside. Um, but I think the way that the cuts were probably gonna make- Probably gonna seem like we're always inside. <laughs> yeah, so just like a reality check, that is not quite reality. All right, that's it. That is the tour of our home, Eva. We've considered doing a tour of like each room or showing more of the systems, showing more uh, kind of the different features. Maybe we could do an outside tour. If you guys are interested in that, let us know, leave a comment. We love the comments. We love replying to comments. So leave a comment. If you haven't subscribed, please subscribe, uh, hit the notification bell and stick around because we do have some really cool videos coming up. Like the next few videos are gonna be epic. Thanks for joining the tour and we will see you next week. Ciao! Nice. They did pretty good. Well done. He's looking happier too. His life better with. <laughs> Are you happy, dog? Like this he looks happier. Got some tail wags going. Get a shot. Okay. Turn it back again. Come away. <laughs>